Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, uh, somebody mentioned yesterday that I never really introduced myself. And so I guess I kind of take for granted that everybody knows who I am. A lot of you are new to the channel and I want to say a huge thank you. We went over 250,000 subscribers this, this morning. Quarter million, hard to believe since I've really only been making full-time content for about 14 months now. Um, but we are going to do a big stream to celebrate, just probably not today, maybe later on this week or the weekend. I'll let you know when that'll be. But my name is Chris. I live in Northeast Ohio. I have a wife and three kids, and YouTube uh, has now become kind of my full-time gig. I have other hats that I wear as well. Uh, I'm a speaker for an organization called Rachel's Challenge, where I get to travel around to schools and speak about kindness and compassion by sharing the story of one of my heroes. Her name was Rachel Joy Scott. She was killed at Columbine. Uh, her family are dear friends of ours, and uh, it's just an honor to represent their daughter. My daughter, my 16-year-old daughter, is named after their daughter. Uh, that's how much that story means to us. Uh, I am also a kind of a part-time pastor. I preach on Sunday mornings. Uh, I spent 14 years in full-time youth ministry uh, and kind of do that on the side as well. So a little bit of everything. I'm a musician. I, you know, I do gigs sometimes doing music and stuff. I, I like to perform in nursing homes uh, for residents who aren't able to get out and about. And I'll, I'll go around to their rooms and play whatever kind of music they like and sing for them, things like that. But I also play in wineries, coffee houses, churches, things like that. Uh, anyway, with all of that said, I want to let you know as well, the very first episode from my series recorded in France. It's uh, about the Pals Battalions at the Battle of the Somme. We'll be going live tomorrow, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 7 p.m. in London, 8 p.m. in France. Um, so be watching for that. It, by the time you see this video, it should already be set up and available. You can go into the chat and everything, but it won't go live till tomorrow. I want to say a big thank you to Brandon Talby, who is our latest executive producer patron, as well as Christopher Herring and Anna, who are our latest producer uh, uh, level patrons. So thank you for that. Today, we're going to do something a little different. Um, burial locations of English and British monarchs over on our uh one of my favorite channels, Useful Charts. They are at 999,000 subscribers. So check them out. Give them a subscribe. Let's get them pushed over 1 million today. They can get that new, that gold play button. That would be amazing for them. I'm so happy to see that they're doing that. But I'm just going to show each of the uh, English and British monarchs, uh, starting with the first kings of England. I'll try to talk and get, give you a little more information about that king or about where they're buried or some story connected to it. That would be fun, something different to do. Let's go ahead and dive in. So, uh, important distinction here to, to note that, um, yeah, England doesn't become a unified kingdom till the 10th century. Uh, it was working toward that for a while, uh, but before that you have multiple kingdoms. You've got Kent and Wessex and Northumbria and Mercia. And if you've ever seen shows like uh, Vikings or the last kingdom they're set during that time when there are these multiple kingdoms and you have people like alfred who are trying to unify england into one nation i think it was alfred's son or grandson who finally did that so we start in 927 uh and then of course it's england until 1707 when you have the union of uh the the crowns of england and scotland into what becomes great britain wales had been administratively a part of england uh, so it doesn't really get counted as being separate because it didn't have its own king. Uh, the king of uh, England at that point is also the, or actually it's the queen uh, of England and the queen of uh, Scotland are united under one crown in 1707. Uh, and it becomes the union of Great Britain. And then uh, in the 1800s, it becomes uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, later Northern Ireland, when the Republic of Ireland is formed. Anyway. Now, one of the things you're going to notice about a lot of these is that a lot of the early ones especially are in abbeys where we don't have the graves anymore. And you can thank Henry VIII for that because during Henry VIII's reign, they did something that was called the suppression of or the dissolution of the monasteries. Uh, it was a, a big cash cow. When Henry broke away from the church in Rome and started the Church of England, he went after these abbeys. Uh, a lot of that was influenced by Thomas Cromwell. 
who was his minister uh, at the time that was in charge of these things. And they seized all of this property, gave it to other people, seized the funds for themselves, seized the wealth for themselves. And a lot of these places got destroyed, including a lot of the places where some of these early kings were buried. It's really sad. Uh, Winchester Cathedral does still exist, and I believe these boxes are basically bones uh, of some of these early kings. One of those things where we don't know 100% for sure who's there or what's there, but Winchester was kind of the early capital uh, for the for the nation of Wessex, which kind of takes the lead in forming England. Several of these as well have been lost because of the great fire in London uh, in the 1660s, which destroyed a good bit of downtown London. I think it started in a bakery or something. Destroyed Saint, the original St. Paul's Cathedral and a lot of these folks. There's this um, plaque that shows all of the graves, some really, really prominent historical figures in England's history, even ones that weren't kings, people like John of Gaunt. Um, so uh, really also very unfortunate. So when you go to St. Paul's today, that St. Paul's was built to replace the one that was destroyed in 1666. And Glastonbury Ab Abbey too is um, is kind of the site that generally gets associated with the King Arthur legend. Swen Forkbeard, you see this guy's buried in Denmark. There's this time when uh, the the kingship of England kind of goes back and forth between uh, Anglo-Saxons and Danes, as they were called. Um, and until 1066, when William the Conqueror comes in, um, it kind of does go back and forth with, with these Vikings who had, had kind of come in and taken territory. Canute's another one of those. But he's buried in England. Harold Harfoot. Tomb also destroyed in the Great Fire. Hearth of Canute, also at Winchester Cathedral. And this is going to be where you're going to start to see the, the uh, burials move to London now. Uh, there's a few exceptions. I think Henry IV is an exception to that. Um, but for for most of them, they're either in London or in Windsor, right outside of London. Edward the Confessor, he's got this huge shrine at Westminster Abbey. Uh, and, and he's the first monarch in many that will come that are buried at um, Westminster Abbey. It's only in the last couple of centuries that that has kind of shifted to uh, Windsor Castle now, where most of them are buried. Harold Godwinson killed in battle with William the Conqueror, who you're going to see now uh, when the Norman invasion happens. These are French uh, Frenchmen who come in and take over the Kingdom of England. And uh, so some of them are buried in France. Quite a few of them are buried in France. Uh, and, and similar to what happened with Henry VIII when the French Revolution happens, uh, a lot of that revolution was... was uh, focused against the nobility and so one of the things they do is they go into these graves of these kings and they start scattering the bones everywhere and so we've lost most of the bodies of the french kings as well as people like um richard the lionheart for example william rufus is back at winchester and i think he might be the last one there Henry I is another one, kind of like Richard III, that they're kind of hoping maybe they can find him at some point. But I don't know. Another abbey. Another lost grave. Matilda. She's sometimes known as Empress Matilda because she was at one time married to the Holy Roman Emperor. But now this is where you're going to have the start of what we know today as the Plantagenet dynasty because her second husband was Geoffrey Plantagenet. Uh, and then starting with her son, that's the Plantagenet dynasty. I think Henry II. Yeah. Bones stolen during the Revolution. Bones stolen during the Revolution. Now, um, the reason they're buried in Anjou uh, is that Geoffrey Plantagenet, who is the father of Henry II and kind of the him and Matilda start this dynasty, uh, he was the Count of Anjou, which is kind of in like north central France. Um, so you'll see several of them are buried in Anjou. At this time, the kings of England owned half of France as well. Uh, King John, he's in Worcester Cathedral. 
So now we're back to Westminster Abbey. And Edward I is one of the one of several kings whose bodies have been examined over the years. He was found to be quite tall for his time. I think he was like 6'1", 6'2", something like that. He was the one who was known as Longshanks. Uh, and that's part of the reason why is because how tall he was and how long parts of his body were like, don't think, I mean like his legs, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, uh, his was exhumed at one time. We'll talk about some of the others. I've always been fascinated by that for some reason. Edward II was uh, murdered when he was overthrown by his wife and her lover, Roger Mortimer. Um, there's a couple different theories about how that happened, but most likely he was either starved to death or smothered. Um, he wasn't killed the way some people like to say, but he's at Gloucester Cathedral. Edward III, another great king, buried at Westminster Abbey. Richard II is another one of those ones that gets overthrown. Um, and this is where you have the seeds being sown for what becomes the Wars of the Roses. Richard was not originally buried at Westminster Abbey, but when Henry IV becomes king, one of the things he does to kind of, I don't know if it's show penance, but um, just honor the guy he overthrew, he brings him back to be buried at Westminster Abbey. And he's at Canterbury. That's one of the last ones you'll see that's not in London. Um, so let's go back here. Henry, Henry V, well-known king, uh, gives that famous St. Crispin's Day speech, the Band of Brothers thing, wins that great victory at Agincourt in France, uh, and then dies at 35 and leaves an infant son, Henry VI, who will be the first one to be buried at Windsor Castle in the new St. George's Chapel. And a lot of subsequent monarchs will be buried there after that. Edward IV. Um, this one's a little tricky. Um, I really wish they could examine these bones because I'm not 100% convinced that they found the bones of Edward V. Edward V and his brother were known as the princes in the tower. Richard was his brother's name. They were um, the sons of Edward IV. Uh, Edward V was overthrown in favor of his uncle, Richard III, which made him kind of portrayed as a tyrant for things like that. Uh, and then Edward and his brother Richard just kind of one day disappeared from their confinement at the tower. Uh, they found these bones, I think, under the stairs doing some renovations um, at the tower in 1674. They reinterred them at Westminster Abbey, and it was claimed at the time that they were the bones of Edward V and his brother, but we really don't know for sure. And there's Richard III. This is the newest of all the tombs. He was found in a parking lot. Incredible story. I highly recommend you check out the... Uh, there's a, a, some great videos of that whole process of them discovering Richard's body. It's just phenomenal archaeology. Uh, and really, really cool to see something like that being possible uh, at this time and place. Uh, just really, really neat. They had a whole ceremony. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch spoke at the, the burial for Richard III. Uh, so they put him in Leicester Cathedral because that's the closest cathedral to where he died and where he was discovered. Uh, his body was discovered in Leicester. Uh, he was killed at the Battle of Bosworth, which was not too far outside of Leicester. So Henry VII then is the first Tudor monarch. He's Henry Tudor. He's the father of Henry VIII. Um, and he's back, He's at Westminster Abbey. And I think he's going to be the last one at Westminster Abbey for a little while. I'm trying to remember if there's been any since him. Uh, Henry VIII, you know, for all of his kind of larger-than-life persona, he's got a very simple tomb uh, in Windsor Castle and St. George's Chapel. And you can see here in this vault, uh, our Henry VIII, Jane Seymour, who was his third wife, uh, died after giving birth to a son. Uh, and then King Charles I, who was famously beheaded. Uh, and I believe there's also an infant there too. Uh, and we know this really well because when they were doing work in the vault underneath um, St. George's Chapel, uh, they broke through the sealed vault into where these bodies were. Uh, and the coffins were there, and a lot of these kings uh, and these monarchs are buried in sealed lead coffins. 
Uh, but they actually examined and looked inside and saw the bones of Henry VIII because like part of his coffin was broken. And they looked at Charles I and I guess his eyes were open. And when they opened the casket, they could see his eyes were open. But then within a few seconds, they kind of like, because they were exposed to the fresh air, they like crumbled into dust like instantly. It's really crazy stuff. But you can actually see, you can see um, like, diagrams like drawings of what that vault looks like and where the caskets are laying and and the, the infant casket i think it might be an infant child of queen anne that was laid on top of one of them oh edward the sixth was at westminster abbey so he is uh he's the the son of henry the eighth and jane, jane seymour he was only 16 when he died and then his aunt mary are we going to do Lady Jane Grey first? Yep. Lady Jane Grey was beheaded. She was a teenager also at uh, the Tower of London. Bloody Mary and Elizabeth. It's always fascinating to me that they are buried together uh, in Westminster Abbey. These sisters, they were half-sisters. Uh, Mary was much, much older than Elizabeth, and Elizabeth succeeded her. Mary was very, like, violently Catholic, and Elizabeth was very strongly Protestant. Uh, and a lot of that had to do with who their mothers were. Mary I was the daughter of um, Catherine of Aragon, who was strongly Catholic herself, coming from Spain. Elizabeth was the daughter of Anne Boleyn. So I forgot that some of these were in Westminster Abbey. So James VI of Scotland, who is James I of England, is the great-grandson of Henry VIII's sister. And when Queen Elizabeth died without any children, uh, none of Henry VIII's children had children. So he never had any grandchildren, Henry VIII. Um, so he had no living descendants today. Uh, so his sister's line becomes the line uh, of inheritance for the crown. And James was uh, the, the son of um, Mary, Queen of Scots. So he takes the throne. So now we're at Charles I, who uh, is beheaded. He's in the same plot with Henry VIII. Uh, Oliver Cromwell, who was Lord Protector, yeah, he was buried in Westminster Abbey, and then when they restored the monarchy, they dig him up and hang, draw, and quarter him. <laughs> uh, and yeah, his head, like, was just buried. You can see pictures of Oliver Cromwell's head just hanging out places. And then his son Richard briefly serves as Lord Protector. Charles II gets a little square in Westminster Abbey. Original tomb in France destroyed during the French Revolution. Reburied in Paris, James II. Because he was he was overthrown uh, and, and went into exile. That's why he's not in England. He was overthrown by William III and Mary II. Again, just those little markers. And I forgot how many more there were in Westminster Abbey. I was thinking they all went to Windsor after this. Now, George I is Georg I. He's German. He doesn't speak a lick of English. Uh, he's the king of... Well, he's... Prince Elector of Hanover. I think his son becomes King of Hanover, or grandson maybe. Um, but he inherits the throne because he's the closest living Protestant uh, relative of uh, Queen Anne when she dies. Last one to be buried outside England. Okay, George II is the last at Westminster Abbey. Now they're going to all start being at Windsor for a while. Now this is really cool uh, because this is actually a picture from the basement, the, the crypt under uh, St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. Uh, and, and you can see how the caskets are just sitting there behind these cages. And there are a lot of these amazing drawings that you can see of what that vault looks like. And before they put like these, these gates on the outside, they were just kind of sitting on shelves along the sides. And that's where Prince Philip is right now, the Queen's husband, who just passed away last year. Um, you, you actually see during his funeral, they lower his casket down through the floor and into this vault. And he'll stay in that vault until the Queen passes away, and then they'll be buried together in their own uh, part of the crypt, much like her parents are. Victoria, yeah, so they built this big mausoleum. It's right outside of Windsor. Uh, and Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert, are buried there. And there's actually a cemetery there at Frogmore as well, where people like the former King Edward VIII, the Queen's uncle, are buried. Edward VII, that's um, another one, St. George's. George V, this is the Queen's grandfather. 
And there, so this is that cemetery I was talking about that's in Frogmore. It's right outside of Windsor Castle, uh, not too far from there. Uh, and His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward Albert Christian George Andrew Patrick David, Duke of Windsor, which was a title was created for him after he abdicated as king. And then we have George the Sixth, who is in this little kind of corner of St. George's Chapel, George and Elizabeth, who just died in 2002. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, that was fun. You know, I, I'm, I'm really passionate about the British monarchy for whatever reason. So check that out. I'm also going to start doing shorts starting today. Uh, just doing just quick, less than one minute videos talking about what happened in history today. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Something a little different. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.